Stephanie Van Auken. I am a library media specialist in East Quag Elementary School. Um, so what I'm going to share with you today are things that I've been uh, utilizing both before this whole distance learning thing and um, now especially that we're distance learning, I really rely on these resources. Um, they, you may be familiar with some of them and if you are, I'm sorry if I'm redundant, um, but maybe just hearing which lessons I use them with and things like that, uh, you might be inspired to have a similar lesson or something. So let me share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we see it. Thank you. Great. Great. Okay. Yes. Okay. So just to start really quickly, I'm not going to go into depth about these ones, but these are specific book resources that I've been using, and that's Epic Books, Tumble Books, and believe it or not, YouTube. Um, with Epic Books, you can see in this little picture here, uh, we have the explore option. You can go down to languages and you can, uh, there's three different languages, uh, four total, including English. So there's uh, Chinese, French, Spanish, and English. Um, all of my students have access to Epic. It is free as long as you make a teacher account. Again, this is something that's very common and a lot of teachers do use already. Um, but still, like I said, I want you to know that I do utilize it a lot and I will usually use this to just let students do any free reading because they have the choice of, um, you know, whatever they want. Tumble Books is a paid per, uh, subscription. However, I get it free through West Hampton Library. And what I'll do with Tumble Books is for my K through three students is I will find a book that uh, is a read aloud on Tumble Books, and I'll post the English uh, read aloud, but I will also look for the, um, a, my population is mostly Spanish speaking students, uh, their parents are Spanish speaking. Uh, not all of them can read or write in Spanish, but they tend to understand it if they hear it. So I'll post the English book version read aloud and the Spanish version. And lastly, <laughs> YouTube, I have a lot of uh, ENL teachers reaching out to me saying, oh, you know, the fifth grade is reading Walk Two Moons. What digital resources do you have for my students that I work with? And believe it or not, I go on YouTube and I tend to find Spanish read alouds um, for these books that are, are class reads. And especially during this time, I really, rely on YouTube for read alouds and I know that there could be copyright issues and things like that but I can't reinvent the wheel and if it's on YouTube and it's there and I watch the videos and make sure they're appropriate and that it's what they're looking for I do share that information along. So now these are some resources that I uh, use with my students um, for research purposes. So on the VRC I really rely on um, Britannica School, and I, I rely on Fact Site Lingo One Two Three a lot. And I'm going to start with those ones, and I'm going to just show you those. Sorry, going to get rid of that one. Okay. So with this, it's obviously um, an encyclopedia, an online encyclopedia. But what's great about it is that it, it's obviously appropriate for a wide range of grade levels. So even though it says elementary, when you do a search, for example, I had a lesson, uh, April was poetry month. So I had the students research a poet. For example, um, <clears throat> Emily Dickinson is a poet. What I love about Britannica is that it's appropriate for elementary school students. I can press the play button and it will read it out loud to the students. Emily Dickinson was a U.S. poet known for her simple works about love. So it'll highlight the sentence it reads to them and that's great for students who are struggling readers or ENL but in addition <sighs> <laughs> um if we if uh, oh yeah students, thank you yeah the students you have this option. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I've been picking at it. So that would be good for you to put it away. <laughs> Thank you. Where they are able to um, go to the Spanish version. Like I said, my population is mostly Spanish speaking. 
and uh, they are able to utilize. No, thanks. I'm going to have some of the chicken and rice from yesterday. The same exact resources. Sorry, Mandy. Let me That's just, okay. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you, but um, one moment. The uh, let's just, can everyone just make sure that they're muted while Mandy is presenting. So. <laughs> Let me see, actually I can mute it, right? Okay, sorry about that, Mandy. Thanks. No, that's okay. All right. um, so what's great is that it's the same exact resource, but uh, just available in Spanish. Granted, they don't have every single article um, in English and Spanish, but what I do ahead of time is if I'm assigning, like I said, I did a poetry unit. I knew Emily Dickinson is available on the Spanish version and now, my students can read it and listen to it in Spanish, which is great. And like I said, I utilize this resource all of the time, whether in school or out. The next one I really like is called uh, Backsite Lingo 123. And I use this specifically for the sixth graders. Many of the sixth graders in New York read Percy Jackson as um, one of their class reads. and um, we did a Greek mythology project. And what I love about this is um, they were all assigned a specific Greek god or goddess. And on this site, it, it's simplified language. That's one. Two, if you hold down the text, it will bring up the Spanish text right underneath it. So the student could, you know, uh, um, if they are able to read in English or at least a little bit, they can attempt it. And then if they're still struggling and they're, they are able to read in Spanish, they're able to read it that way. Or if we could switch it by this little language button up here. And now the default is Spanish, but if they click it, it will be in English instead. The only thing I don't like about this is that it doesn't have that reading option. Um, and of course, I, I think the listening piece is really useful for a lot of students, but for those who are able to read Spanish, I utilize this a lot. And like I said, with my sixth grade students, they tend to be able to read in Spanish at least a little bit. Um, and they tend to, uh, you, when, when we do use this resource, they really don't have too much trouble between going back to English and Spanish. <clears throat> so other resources that are not on the VRC, but I have been utilizing is Pebble Go and common sense education. Pebble Go, I don't actually, my district doesn't pay for, it is a paid subscription, um, but I'm taking advantage of their free trials. And if you're not sure how to get that information, I can get it for you. Um, but with Pebble Go, I tend to use it with K through three. So this is what it looks like. Um, Pebble Go itself is a K through three resource. Pebble Go Next is for grades uh, four and up. Um, but this is just the home page, and you can see already that I have both my English and my Spanish options here. I had the students pick um, an animal they wanted to research, and for the students that needed it, they knew that they could go to, um, the, they can click the Spanish option. And what I love about this too is that it does read to you. Amphibios. Aves. Clasificación de animales. So they're able to listen to everything on the site as well as read it and on every page. Partes del cuerpo. It will, uh, you will hear de what it arañas. is um, that you're highlighting. And it's an easy switch back to English or Spanish um, as needed, which is right up here. So this is a great resource because it's very easy to see, it's very user friendly, and the students that need or prefer having that Spanish option, it's not like they have to go looking for the uh, that button or they have to go to a different website completely. It's just, everything is just at a click of the button to change. And then lastly, I've been utilizing common sense education specifically for digital citizenship. And these are pre-made lessons. This website is free if you sign up. Um, but for fifth grade specifically, we are, we are doing distance learning and I wanted to make sure that my students <laughs> knew how to act and uh, use the internet well. And of course we cover this in school too,
but I thought it would be a good time to really focus on it. And with, with each lesson on here, um, what's great is that you get <laughs> everything you need. So you'll get, a, you'll get slides, you get videos, and as soon as you press on it, you get the options. So what I'll do in Google Classroom is I'll download everything for English, everything for Spanish, and I'll upload both so that the students have the option to watch the videos in Spanish, they can uh, read the slides in Spanish, they can complete the work in English or Spanish, it's whichever they prefer. And um, I really think this is a great resource because again, I, it's, the students are able to pick and choose which they prefer, which they're more comfortable with, and it um, has everything that you need. You're not, you don't have to, you don't have to recreate your English handout in Spanish. It's, it's done for you. So those are the resources that um, I've been utilizing a ton. I know I talked really fast, so I'm sorry. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of those things? And again, sorry if I was redundant. No, that was great. Um, thank you, because, you know, we don't always have, um, we, we never have the same uh, participants joining each week. So it's always, right. Um, you know, new resources for someone or a good review for others. So um, just to clarify, we have some questions. Sure. So facts, uh, fact site lingo, that's part of the VRC, right? Yes. Okay. So if you're an Eastern Suffolk BOCES component school district, um, or if your school district has a contract um, with uh, Eastern Suffolk BOCES, you may already have access to the VRC. And I would just contact your librarian um, to get the login information, right? Because um, yep. Mandy, I do know, and maybe I shouldn't be saying this out loud, but on your website, you have the login information for the VRC. Yes. So if someone from another district uses your login, will that just capture data mm. data for you? Um, or will it will not be allowed, or it, it's, it won't work? No, um, it's a login. So if they go through uh, the East Quag, if they click on the East Quag link, and they put in the East Quag information, a uh, username and password, they, they'll get in just fine. Um, okay. So so maybe, um, yeah, and then, you know, it, it's good for you because it does, um, data-wise, it shows that more users from East Quag are using the service. Right. Um, and, and that's good for you. So um, what I'll do is I'll share your website and then um, our participants can take a look around and see some of the other things that you're offering as well. And um, some participants have asked if it'd be okay if they contact you, if you, if they have other questions, would you mind putting your email address? Yeah, of course. Chat? Absolutely. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right. Thanks. I can share it again if someone needs to though. And will you, um, is, will you be able to send us uh, your presentation? With yes, of course. In there? Okay. Um, and, and yeah, so if you are a component school district, I would reach out to your, um, your librarian first to see if you have an account and this way when you're logging in you can use that login information so it captures it for your district but if you don't and you want to borrow uh east quags uh yeah. you can uh we'll share mandy's website and you can um find the information there and again it will capture data for east quag um and that's why you should check with your school district first yeah and again you know even if uh, you end up finding that you don't have that resource or a resource that you see that I have that you don't at least getting to practice on my on my page then you can say you know I've I borrowed it I used it I loved it is this something that we could purchase okay excellent thank you and yeah. um so the Britannica school that you were showing us that's also part of the VRC right yes. um yep. is there a link that you can send us that would bring us right to the Britannica school or in Escuela, or does that have to come from going into the VRC? Uh, no, I can send you a link, uh, okay. but the, the link will be specific to the school. So if I'm giving you, um, I, I would have to give you my link and then my login. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So if you just want to share your link and then what sure. I'll do is I'll put, um, share the link. And then if you want to share your library um, website page, yep. that will help as well. You got it. Because I think that's what most people that everyone's really interested in the resources that you shared. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad I could uh, help. And again, sorry if I went too fast or something. No, but no, no. Feel yeah. free to reach out yeah. and ask any questions. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you.